Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of Usnia, also known as old man's beard. So I want to first clarify that Usnia and Spanish moss are not the same thing, though they look very similar. So I'm not talking about Spanish moss, and it seems like when I looked out of curiosity, I didn't find any specific health benefits to Spanish moss. It's typically used for decor, but can also be loaded with chiggers and commonly found in the south. Usnia, though I believe it's you can pretty much find it anywhere, I know it's quite common in more cooler, damp areas like ours, especially since we are not far from the rainforest here on the peninsula of Washington State. So right here I have a jar of Usnia that I collected off of our other piece of property just down the road from us, and it's I didn't actually have to dehydrate this because it dry, it's mostly dry when you harvest it anyway, but I do like to rinse it off some and try to pick through it and get all the little bits of other types of moss that can get hung up in there out. And then I just lay it on a towel and let it dry naturally. It doesn't need to be put in a dehydrator because it just, it dries, even in our humid climate, it dries very quickly. <laughs> anyway, that's what I have here. There's actually quite a bit. And so I'll be putting various photos. Some are ones I took myself. Some are those I gathered from the internet. So you can become very familiar with what it looks like. And what Usnia is, it's a beard lichen. And what lichens are, are a combination of algae and fungus that grow together. It kind of makes me think of a SCOBY that's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Well, this is basically a symbiotic moss made of algae and fungus. But old man's beard is very beneficial. It's also known as the lungs of the forest because of how well it cleans the air and also how good it is for our lungs and any kind of breathing issue we may have. So let's move on to these benefits and talk more about them. It's a natural antiseptic. So you can use it topically as an antiseptic or internally. It's great for wound healing because of its antiseptic properties. And it can be used in a salve by either powdering it up and adding it to a salve or you can extract it in an oil and use that oil in your salve. So let's just say you're wanting to make a powerful herb infused oil to make your healing salve out of. Old man's beard is one of those that you can add to that along with plantain, yarrow, comfrey, calendula, dandelion flowers, and so many other herbs. You can use it alone in the herb infused oil or with any combination of these other herbs that I've mentioned. It's also anti-inflammatory. So again, taken internally or applied externally. It's antibacterial. So it's a it's great for helping to fight infections of various types. It's especially good for staph infections and strep. It helps to protect against cancers. It promotes weight loss by helping to increase your metabolism and burn fats. It is a natural analgesic, which means it's a good, it's another one of those herbs you can add to your pain remedy list. And by the way, along with my herb playlist where I have videos like this that are profiles on specific herbs, I'll also put the playlist on lists of remedies for specific ailments. So I have one in there specifically on pain where I list off several herbs that you can use and many others. So I'll be putting both those playlists in the description box down below. It's also very good for helping to loosen phlegm. So this could be great in a tea along with your marshmallow root and or leaves at helping to soothe the throat as well. And to loosen up the phlegm you have in your lungs, you can also use it in a steamed form such as making a pot of boiling water the old fashioned way, put your towel, a towel or something over your head so you can really get that steam from the usnea infused water and any other herbs you would like to add in there because that's something you can throw peppermint in there as well. So that's also gonna help unclog the sinuses and then breathing it in through both your mouth and your nose. Usually when I do a steam, I'll do it both ways, I'll do through my nose, exhale, and then I'll next time I'll exhale 
through my mouth so it can go directly down into my lungs. But I want, sometimes I'm needing to really get it up into my sinuses as well. So if you're only breathing through your mouth just to get into your lungs, but you're needing to clear sinuses, then you need to make sure that you're doing it at least both ways, if not just through the sinuses. And of course, the steam itself is great for helping, helping to loosen up phlegm and mucus in the sinuses. So I did mention it being good for the lungs. So just respiratory health in general, it is excellent for. It's good at helping with indigestion and urinary tract disorder. So any kind of infection or anything within the urinary tract is gonna be very beneficial too. I've already mentioned a few ways that you can consume it, but let's touch on that again so you can use it in teas. Typically, you know, by itself, it might not taste all that great. It doesn't have a strong flavor. It's actually very mild. But if you mix it in with some other herbs, so let's say you're trying to just work on helping with your respiratory health, you can throw that in there with some mullein, which is also an excellent choice, and maybe some other herbs for flavor, such as peppermint or lemon balm. And peppermint, of course, is, is one of my favorites for teas. It's also good for helping to open up the passageways and many other herbs, any herb of choice that you like to consume for whatever reason that you also enjoy the flavor of, this is good to mix that in with. You can also mix well with spices such as your cinnamon, cloves, star anise, one of my very favorites. I like mixing those three together. Ginger, another great one right there. I have another quart jar full of usnea that I am tincturing. So with that, I did go ahead and use vodka because from what I was reading, going with a spirit rather than a wine like I like to use for a lot of my extracts is better when it comes to usnea and certain other things, you know, so same thing with cinchona bark, at least some Something as strong as vodka and if you're taking it as a tincture in that form then you're looking at a teaspoon every four hours during the time that you're trying to heal up your lungs from whatever it is even if it's that current virus that has been going around for the past couple of years or any other type you know bronchitis any other type of issues that you're having with your respiratory health and then I mentioned it can be used in salves either through the form of an infused oil or powdered up and added to a salve as far as where you can find it, um, in just kind of looking around on our property where it grows, and my first thought was it seems to really prefer the hardwoods. Then I realized why. It's not that it prefers hardwoods over softwoods, it's just around here we have a lot of softwoods because you know we're next to a rainforest, but it's that it doesn't grow as well on the softer woods because a lot of them, when you go back in there, it's very dense. You'll see the other types of mosses hanging from there that are more of a deeper green where Usnea has a very light sage. You'll see those other mosses, but very rarely see the Usnea. And when you do, what I find, I realize it's those ones that are more exposed to sunlight. So I realize that Usnea grows better on trees and in areas where it gets a little more sun than in the dense forest. You can find find it on living branches. You can find it on old rotting logs. It will grow on anything like that, but it does prefer to grow on wood. And it does grow very slowly. So when you go to harvest it, I don't recommend just trying to get every little teeny tiny bit that you find. Leave some of that so it has time to grow and just kind of go more for the bigger clusters that you can find. Now on our piece of property, we had a bunch, Patrick had to take out a bunch of alder branches in order to get our new shipping container on there and so he had to get those out of the way and there was a lot of usni on there and so in that case because we're just going to be burning those branches up and getting rid of them here soon the i've been just picking every little bit that i could get off there because those aren't going to be there forever but if it's something that you know like a, tr a standing tree or anything else and it's just a little small bits just leave it give it time to grow because it can take a while you'd be better off doing that than taking it young and then maybe not have it come back in that same place and so uh anyway yes you can go out you can wild harvest it you know or if you like us you have a piece of property where You've got enough of the trees that get enough light exposure, you could probably find some there. And just make sure you know, you kind of really study up on the differences between Spanish moss and Usnea because they look almost exactly alike. So make sure you get very familiar with that. Now, what I would like from any of you out there who are already using Old Man's Beard for whatever, how are you using it? 
how have you used it and how has it helped you and also share with us do you forage for it do you get it on your own property where do you find it what's the most common trees and things that you find it on all right well i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out the playlist and any other links i think to put in the description box down below by clicking on either show more in all caps right down here below my channel name if you're on a computer and if you're on a smart device it'll be just a little gray arrow on this side that you'll just touch to open up that description box all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless